What's up, Cartmasters? Back with another video, but this time with my first ever weapon tutorial for none other than the Longsword. For those of you that have been watching me on Twitch, you know I've been a Longsword main since I really got into the series back in Freedom 2. Now, we'll be going over the basics and cover some advanced mechanics, but keep in mind that since this is based off the demo, the final game may change some things. If that happens, I'll make an updated guide. For veterans, check the description for timestamps in case you'd like to jump around to the new stuff. Don't forget to drop a comment and like on the video as it really helps the channel grow, and smash that subscribe button to find out when I post the next video. What are we waiting for? Let's get to it! Being the younger brother to the greatsword, the longsword is a fast and agile weapon that offers high damage output with great vertical reach. It's great for hitting monster parts that sit higher, like tails for example. Especially with this most recent iteration from Iceborne, the weapon has been given multiple counters that highly rewards risky and aggressive gameplay. That being said, you are unable to guard and need to rely on evasion and counterattacks to mitigate damage. The weapon is almost infamous for tripping and flinching allies, so you best be careful when you go into multiplayer. The biggest con to the weapon is that damage output is tied to your spirit gauge and spirit gauge level. If you can't manage both effectively, your damage will suffer as a result. Let's go over some of the basic attacks. By pressing X, either stationary or by moving, the hunter will move forward and perform an overhead slash. The overhead slash can also be performed while in midair. This is also your sheathed attack. By pressing A, the hunter will perform a thrust. Your basic combo string can be performed by pressing X over and over. The first X will always be an overhead followed by a second overhead into a thrust, rising slash, and then finally loops back into an overhead, back to thrust, and etc. If you want to go for a quicker combo, you can press A repeatedly instead to thrust, then rising slash, looping back into the thrust. By pressing X and A at the same time, the hunter will perform a fade slash. Neutral left stick will make the hunter fade slash backwards, while holding left or right on the left stick will make you travel laterally. Next up, we've got the Spirit Blade. By expanding Spirit Gauge and pressing ZR, the hunter will perform an attack that has a built-in Mind's Eye, or a skill that basically prevents the attack from bouncing off the monster. ZR can be pressed for a total of 4 times to perform Spirit Blade 1 through 3 with the 4th button press executing the finisher aka the Spirit Round Slash which increases your Spirit Gauge level provided that you make contact. The Spirit Blade attack string can be extended by pressing X in between Spirit Blade 1 through 3 which can help recover some Spirit Gauge. You can also use the Spirit Blade in midair. With no level, your character will do 1 slash. With white or yellow, your character will do two slashes while getting a small air boost, and with red, three total slashes with an air boost. Provided that you have Spirit Gauge, you can follow up with the Spirit Blade 3 to get into Round Slash faster. Any basic attack can generally be followed up by a Spirit Blade. And now we have the Spirit Gauge. Now as I mentioned with some of the attacks, the Spirit Gauge is a meter exclusive to the Longsword. As basic attacks make contact, the meter is built up. The gauge will slowly decay, but if it's filled completely, it will stay full for a short amount of time before decaying again. By performing a successful round slash or EI spirit slash, the spirit gauge level increases, changing from zero to white, then yellow, and then finally red, with each level increasing the overall damage output. You can think of the spirit gauge and the spirit gauge level as resources to perform specific attacks. Spirit Blade combo, in addition to the Foresight Slash, requires Spirit Gauge to execute, while the Helm Breaker requires at least one Spirit level to perform. It's difficult at first, but once you get used to the kit, you'll realize Longsword comes with options to upkeep your damage and gauges. Now let's get into counter moves. The first counter attack we'll introduce is called the Foresight Slash, which is performed by expending whatever Spirit Gauge is available in addition to pressing ZR and A after an attack. The hunter will slide backwards relative to the directional input before coming back with a sliding slash. During this animation, the hunter is invincible and if you time the attack during the slide against a monster's attack, an audible DING sound will cue. And if the attack makes contact, your spirit gauge will completely replenish. If you press ZR on a successful attack, it allows for an immediate spirit round slash. 
Now, contrary to Iceborne slash World, it does not require stamina, only a sliver of spirit gauge. Next up, we've got something called the Special Sheath, which is performed by pressing ZR plus B at the same time after an attack. The Hunter pulls backwards relative to your directional input and assumes a sheathed stance. At this point, you have three options. Either stay still, which drops the stance after about four seconds, or you can cancel it earlier by rolling, which is a godsend since we couldn't roll out of it in Iceborne. Two, press X to perform the EI slash, an advancing double slash that on contact gives the player spirit gauge regen for a short amount of time. Spirit Blade 2 can be performed after the EI slash by pressing ZR. Contrary to Iceborne, you no longer have iframes on the move. Many moves can cancel into Special Sheath, including any basic attack, Foresight Slash, Round Slash, and even the Helmbreaker. Use the EI Slash to upkeep damage and your Spirit Gauge. Finally, by pressing ZR, the Hunter will execute the EI Spirit Slash, which is a Round Slash that zips past the monster, leaving you in a crouched stance. If the attack is timed perfectly, Three additional hits will appear on the monster in true anime fashion, in addition to raising the spirit gauge level. This attack has considerably high motion values, making it your strongest counter in addition to the utility it provides for damage upkeep. If you miss it, it no longer reduces your spirit gauge level. Spirit Blade 3 can also be performed on a successful counter. Next up, we've got the Silk Bind attacks. Within this demo, we're given two Silk Bind attacks as demonstrated in the highlight trailer First up, we've got the Soaring Kick, which essentially replaces the Spirit Thrust back from World. The Hunter uses Silk to propel through the air with the Kick. If the Kick misses, the Hunter will throw out a basic Slash. However, if the Kick makes contact, the Hunter will then vault up and perform a Plunging Thrust, which gives Spirit Gauge regen. If you have at least White Spirit Gauge level, by pressing ZR once the Kick makes contact, you will instead perform something called the Spirit Helmbreaker, which makes a return from World and Iceborne, in which the Hunter drops fast to the ground with an overhead slash. If contact is made, seven total hits will hit where the blade passed through. This is your highest DPS burst option. Keep in mind that Plunging Thrust can be aimed to a certain degree, while the Helmbreaker has a lot more room to correct midair. Also note that the attack will expend one level of Spirit Gauge regardless of contact, and contrary to Ward slash Iceborne, you do not get Spirit Regen on good contact. Think of the Soaring Kick as two things. It's a gap closer or aerial evasive maneuver to dodge attacks with your weapon out, in addition to being a tool for big damage and Spirit Gauge upkeep. You can also obviously use Soaring Kick as a means to deal damage or knock out airborne monsters out of the sky. The other Silk Bind attack is a counter move named the Serene Pose, which is akin to Generation Ultimate's Critical Juncture. By expending two Silk Bug Gauges, the Hunter creates a wall of Silk that when hit, allows for a powerful counterattack that expends one Spirit Gauge level, but allows for an immediate Spirit Blade 3 follow-up. The Serene Pose can be aimed in any direction. Regardless of whichever direction you're facing, so long as the Silk Wall is hit, the counterattack will follow through. Otherwise, it'll drop after about 4 seconds. Now that we've got the basics down, let's talk about some advanced tips. Especially since meter management is important, you'll want to utilize the Spirit Regen from Plunging Thrust and EI Slash. Chaining into EI Slash not only does damage, but is also the only resource-free method for Spirit Regeneration. Pro tip! Use EI Slash to initiate Wyvern Riding if you're playing solo. The Spirit Regen will still work while you're deciding on what to do with the monster mid-ride. Some attacks can be chained into wire bug actions. The most important one for Longsword is the EI Spirit Round Slash into Soaring Kick. Ideally, your counter will make contact, which won't only deal damage, but it'll give you one Spirit Gauge level in addition to being able to immediately get chained into a Helm Breaker, which can then be canceled again back into Special Sheath. You get the point. Special Sheath and Foresight Slash are not only counters, but can also help you reposition and the directional input redirects your Hunter relative to the direction you face. A lot of attacks can be cancelled into either counters, so try experimenting and get familiar with the combinations. Both counters can be used to negate damage in addition to flinching from things other than physical attacks, such as roars and tremors. You can use this to your advantage to counter through it and continue your attack. Similarly, you can also use both counters as a means to close gaps. 
With the Foresight Slash, you can move towards the monster by holding the left stick opposite to the monster at an angle and steer the attack back into the monster. By using the Special Sheath, you can correct the direction your character faces. The EI Spirit Slash will cover a lot of ground relative to the direction, which you can then cancel into either Spirit Blade 3 or, if there's an opening, go for a Juicy Helmbreaker. If you know a long windup or a big attack is coming, it is usually worth it to go for the EI Spirit Slash. The thing you have to keep in mind is that it takes a little bit of time to get into the Special Sheath, so you want to make sure that you can prepare in advance. If you're not comfortable with the timing, Foresight Slash and the more costly option of Serene Pose is much easier and generally more safe to execute. While you're in midair with Spirit Level, the directional input with Spirit Blade can help correct your hunter's facing direction. However, if you want to get into the combo faster, you can press ZR as you're about to land to cut the attack's animation quicker. If you're unsure when an attack is about to come, but feel like you want to counter, you can always use the A combo loop to try and bait for one of your counter attacks. You can still combo loop from Spirit Blade 1 and Spirit Blade 2 by pressing X or A, but you only really need to press X as the second press will go back into your basic combo loop. Pressing A a second time, however, will not. And that's everything! This should cover everything that can possibly be covered in the demo. Hopefully there will be even more goodies for us like the elusive wired Sakura Slash that hasn't been officially announced just yet. For Longsword veterans, you will feel much more confident with this iteration of Longsword as Spirit Upkeep has drastically improved and the gap closing potential and speed of the new Helmbreaker helps pull off some very big damage. Now I don't have the numbers nor the data, but motion values for a lot of the attacks have also improved overall. For newcomers, I hope this guide was easy to understand. It may seem overwhelming at first, but take your time learning the basics of the attacks. Once you feel comfortable with the kit, start experimenting with the various cancels and follow-ups in your arsenal. How do you feel about Longsword and Rise so far? What do you feel about the game thus far that we've been able to play inside the demo? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget that you can catch me live streaming on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, where I typically stream at around 9 p.m. Pacific time. I do a lot of variety of gaming and Monster Hunter, and once Rise comes out, you can bet that I'll be playing a bunch of that. I just finally joined the Sub 5 Longsword Speedrun Club for Mizutsune, and now I'm gunning for Sub 430, so please cheer me on. That's it for me, Hunters. As always, get mad, get sad, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Sports, let's go. Another Helmbreaker right on the face. Let's go. Esports. 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 <laughs> Yo, you finally joined the Sub Five Club. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't even care if I win.